Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on one thing, single barrels. Best of all, you can try before you buy. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution so you know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and who from the industry may be coming in to visit. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers traveling mini bars that are no bigger than a small purse or toiletry bag. Best of all, they are fully customizable so you can create the perfect piece that is unique for you. If you own your own business, what a fun and unique way to promote what you do. Check them out online at thebartogo.com. That is the number two in the bar to go. If you have wholesale questions, call my friend Isabel Clark at 504-481-1297. Finally, we are sponsored by the Neely Family Distillery. NFD is a family-owned business that keeps ringing up awards in the spirits world. Head to Sparta, Kentucky to experience the family history, award-winning spirits, and meet the Neely family. Check them out online at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today we have a special show where we're going to be tasting a new offering from 15 stars here at the ABV Barrel Shop Tasting Bar. My name is Steve Akeley. I'm joined by Jim Fosnott and Darren McCroy. What's up, guys? How you doing, Steve? Good. <laughs> Great. Hi. What? what? What is wrong with you? Every time. It just... He's just saying hello to me. He's not even saying anything. I know. And you want to answer the question. I say, right. how are you doing, Steve? And you want to answer that question. I know. It, I, but my, this problem, I was like, okay, don't answer the question. Don't answer the question. It's you're unfortunate. Like you're yeah. like an idiot savant at times. <laughs> it, it, it's unfortunate because Jim and I won't be around to see you slip into old age. You know, We won't get to see you at... Well, I feel uh, like we already know, are watching right, him. Right, yeah, because it's definitely already there, so... <laughs> But yeah, I can't imagine you at uh, 55 like I am right now. Uh, that uh, that'd be crazy <laughs> to think about. But uh, yes, you will. Uh, you will be a, a good old man because you you're getting it down already. So very cool. Uh, before we get to uh, 15 stars, which we'll talk about what uh, what they've got going on here, we'll uh, taste it online. We'll even do a cork pop before we go out to break. This is a full size bottle they've sent for for tasting purposes, so that's pretty cool. We haven't opened it up or anything. None of us have tried this. We've tried a previous offering from 15 stars, but not ha haven't tried this one. So it's a triple cask finish. So we'll get into exactly what that means after the break. But for right now, Darren said there's something he wanted to talk about. What is that, Darren? So. What percentage of your guys' Facebook friends, if they walk through the store door right now, would you recognize right away or even if it took you a little bit while to place them? Seven percent. Seven percent? No, it's say, not it's not a lot. Yeah. I'd say ten, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. It's most of it is uh stuff that uh has come uh, offshoot of, you know, this place, the the ABV barrel shop or the ABV network for me. I mean, yeah. 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 I, I think you, most people would be hard pressed though to recognize everyone. <clears throat> uh, yes. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, yeah. Unless it's you know, my dad was like five people on Facebook, he'd be good. But right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So once you start building that network, and then people start following you, yeah, it goes on. What, what do you think your percent would be, Darren? I less than seven. I I think two really? percent would be a good mark. Really. Oh, man. And, and they would mostly have to be the syndicate members, and that's the ones you know. Yes. Yeah. What about Demetrius King? Would you know him? Uh, yes, as long as it wasn't corporate Demetrius. Corporate Demetrius <laughs> walks in, I have no clue. I think if corporate Steve walked in in a suit just out of the random. Yeah. Guy, if I walked by him in a bar, I don't think I'd recognize corporate Steve <laughs> yeah. right off the bat. Yeah, I look unrecognizable uh, uh, from just a few years ago. So I, yeah. I, I, Years ago, I had a, uh, a guy who worked for me at Total Wine um, shaved off his beard and mustache and everything for, for Halloween for something he was doing. And I walk in, I'm talking to their managers, like, hey, who's the, who's the new guy when we hire him? Like, no, he's been here for like five years. <laughs> so, so, I'm like, I had no idea that was him. I mean, really? Just, oh yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah. Huh? It's uh, it's amazing to think about. I don't think I'm ever going back. I can't imagine myself being clean shaven again. Even uh, even if I retire from this, get rid of uh, the you know the bourbon industry, I'm not involved. Uh, I, I I like the look I've got going on now. I feel it's more appropriate. 
uh, than, than uh, the You creature. had those pictures of you the other day. I didn't recognize. I, I yeah, was like, oh, yeah. the, one of those is Steve because he's showing me a picture. Yeah. But uh, I feel like I got a look going on. We had a guy come in here yesterday. And, uh, of course, you know, in your mind, you're, you're playing this, uh, this uh, thoughts through. And, I, and uh, uh, you know, I was like, oh, this is just a n nice little old man. I like this guy. And uh, uh, that's what I'm in my mind. That's the that's that's what's playing inside my head as I'm talking to the guy. I, I did. I like the guy. He was he was good. He was uh, talking about uh, some of the whiskey he liked. I like some of the two. We, we were talking whiskey. And I, I said, "This is a, a cool old dude. I like this guy." Then he tells me uh, he's thinking about moving and he's going to be coming to the area, which is cool. But he's looking at small cities. He wants some acreage, so it's not necessarily he's not a St. Louis County type of guy. He's, he's going a little bit further out. But he says, "You know, I want to be careful because I'm getting older." I'm like, "Yep, exactly. I get it." <laughs> Uh, I, I could see that uh, fun old guy. And uh, he says, I'm turning 55 next year. <laughs> well, fuck, he's younger than me. <laughs> Goddamn guy's younger than me. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, he wanted a place that has to make sure that they, he's, he's checking the cities, make sure they have good hospital services and stuff like that. And I thought, shit, this guy is. <laughs> <laughs> he's a full year younger than me. <laughs> oh, so, Darren, that's going to happen to you. You, you, you know, you. You go through life uh, with your uh, standout, uh, you know, as being the youngest person in everything that you do. I mean, I certainly started, uh, you know, out that way. I was a, a store manager at Schnucks at the age of 21, uh, working overnights. And, uh, you know, when I, I worked for the county, I was the youngest guy doing that. And then, uh, you know, and then I go into, uh, I worked with a bunch of old guys when I started my sales career. I was, I was 24 years old or no, 23, something like that when I started my sales career. And, uh, you know, I was working with a bunch of what I consider really old guys. I think the closest one to me was like 39. I thought, he's a bunch <laughs> of old dudes, man. And then it went up from there all the way to a guy, you know, in his 60s and stuff. And, uh, yeah, next thing you know, you're that guy. When you, yeah, you, you know, look around the table, at some point you realize that's you. So yeah. You're the old guy. The one that really hit me is uh, Cardinals baseball. There's, start, there's starting to be players that are younger than me that are yeah, playing professional I remember baseball. That, I remember that moment. Do you remember that, Jim? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it also happened, too. It's uh, And I'm not big into politics, but when politicians start being younger than you, oh, it's, yes. it's also yeah. upsetting as well. Because you're thinking, these are people that are running you know, the country or, or the, you know, they're high level in the state or whatever they're, they're political, whatever they're doing. When they're younger than you, you're like, what the what? hell? Yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> yeah. What am I doing with my it life? It happens quick, too. It's like, yeah. Uh, all yeah. of a sudden you blank and then you're. Year old, yeah, yeah. So, 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 be be cautious about that. Yeah, yeah. There's been many people that have given me the advice: to just don't get older. It's don't like, get older. Okay, yeah, I'll don't work on older. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, one guy came in, and I guess he had met you the other day, and uh, Jim and I was there. Is he like, does he round out the the ZZ Top trio? True. Yeah. <laughs> well, first of all. I, None of us have a ZZ Top beard. No. I, I have a long beard. I have a different style than they do. I always like to say that. Jim has a short, short beard. beard. I don't know how the hell he figures into it. I guess he's the Frank beard. He's the the the, yeah. the, the, uh, the drummer there. I mean, I would love a ZZ Top beard. Yeah. I've never been in New Orleans with you, though, five years ago. So coming to the hotel and someone's like, ZZ Top's in town? Yeah, people <laughs> people say that, uh, yes. But if you look at their beard, it's a different style. Yeah. It's a very different style. But, uh, yeah, what, what are you going to do? I, uh, but I like ZZ Top. So that's okay. There's worse things to be uh, mistaken yes. for. Yeah. This is true. This is yeah. true. I am a big ZZ Top fan. So first concert I ever saw was ZZ Top. So I didn't go to concerts when I was young. My uh, my dad didn't want me to go because uh, he worked security at concerts <laughs> and shit like that. Never wanted me to go. Just, so I didn't go until I was in high school. I went to 1983, uh, which is my freshman year. That's the first concert I ever went to. It was ZZ Top. So yeah, the Eliminator tour. I saw the Recycler tour from them a few years later. That'd have been mm -hmm. like ninety. One, I guess. Yeah, Somewhere. yeah. I uh, I went to a bunch of ZZ Top shows. Even like that first one, they did back to back shows two nights. I did both both nights. So yeah, was definitely a big big fan of them back in the day. Of course, it was just everything made sense. Uh, you know, this sounds ridiculous to you, but uh, you know, their their videos were great. Awesome. And back yeah. in those days, <laughs> and I was all about the videos. And I you know, as a high school kid, uh, you know, somebody that had a very cool video you were into, and they had the cool car. I was into cars. I liked you know. Old cars at the time, they had that 34 Ford, and everything just worked. So, but man, I thought those guys were ancient too. I thought they were uh, just old men, you know. It was like, it's so cool that they can still even play their guitars at that age. Yeah. <laughs> know, they were probably in their late 30s. I was going to say, they probably were. It's all with the beards. At one point, Bic offered them a million dollars each to shave off their beards yeah. for a commercial with a Bic razor. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. If anybody's listening and wants to pay me a million to shave off the beard, I will do that. Yeah. For the record. Yeah. I'll, I'll do, do it for half. <laughs> oh, half a mil. Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, what we're going to do next, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to try this. But before we get to that, the last thing we're going to do, 
Darren, let's take this thing out with a cork pop. What do we got here? Don't screw it up. All right, that was good. Solid. That was solid. Oh, so that's a heavy that's a, cork. The cork is uh, cool looking, yeah. So it's got, uh, it looks like, uh, it's dated 1795. It looks like an old coin, but it's uh, 15 stars. Check that out, Jim. That's a, that is pretty cool. I like what they, I like what they've done there. You could throw that at somebody. You right? could, <laughs> you could throw that at someone. So, all right, we'll take that quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to give this thing a taste. We'll do that in just a few. Okay, let's talk about the people that make these shows happen. First up is the Stave and Thief Society. Via their in-person class at Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, the Stave and Thief Society is the place where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge an executive bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. We're also sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop focuses exclusively on barrel picks. It's the job of owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott to seek out distilleries that are making the best whiskey in the world, taste through their barrels, and select the ones that are off profile in the best way possible. They have high standards and refuse to allow anything into their store other than something they would be proud to have their name on. This leads to some really awkward conversations with distilleries that can't make it, but they do it for you, their customers. Learn more about what is going on at their St. Louis-based store by heading over to abvbarrelshop.com. Last but not least, we are sponsored by Neely Family Distillery. Royce Neely is the 11th generation distiller in one of America's oldest distilling families. A visit to Neely Family Distillery takes you through family history, where you can see all the artifacts and newspaper clippings through the years from this family that started distilling in America after James Neely arrived from Northern Ireland in 1740. Today, Royce Neely and his team are crafting some of the best spirits in America. Their bourbon and absinthe offerings keep winning top honors in the spirits competitions. Recently, their absinthe made history as the first platinum winner in the absinthe category at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Neely Family Distillery is definitely a bucket list destination if you are a bourbon fan. Learn more about their spirit offerings, visiting their facility, and the awards they have collected over at neelyfamilydistillery.com. McDill, what did you say you wanted? A Jaguar tequila. Why? It's, it's so because it's pretty. It's like a. It, I don't think it's a decanter, but it's a bottle. It is fucking three feet long. It's in the display case. You have to ask for them to unlock for you. It's three hundred dollars, and I'm like, it's so pretty. It looks like a whole big ass cat. It's probably shitty tequila inside of it, but it's a <laughs> tequila Jaguar, and I fucking want it. I want it so bad. <laughs> and you're listening to working. the Bourbon Daily. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back. We are getting ready to try from 15 stars their triple cast. Looks like it's a new product that says batch number one. So, Darren, what can you tell us about this? So, it is Kentucky Straight Bourbon finished in cognac, port, and rum cast, and it is 105 proof. Okay. Why are they named 15 stars, Darren? Um... Because Kentucky's the 15th state. state. Yeah, That's what I was going to guess, but I was making stars. sure that was... Oh, he was reading quickly. He's spinning that bottle around. Yeah. Two okay. fine-aged Kentucky bur bourbons married together. Finished in select cognac, port, and rum cask. I already said that. But carefully blended together at 16 and 8 years old. Oh, so yeah. Old stuff. Yeah. Old Kentucky whiskey. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. Uh, I like I like that. This this has a lot of promise. We haven't. None of us have tasted this, so we don't know. No. But it's certainly got a lot of promise there. So uh, let's talk about this on the nose first. And let's then, cheers. 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 Before we... The nose is really nice. Yeah, I do like that nose. You get the sweetness of that yeah. cognac, cognac and rum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I tend to like cognac finishes too, by the way. And I, you know what? I also find them, I'm liking the rum ones too. We've had yeah. a couple of rum ones in here. I like those. So, and the port is a, that's kind of a, a the standard. Yeah, the classic. All right, let's taste it. Yeah, this is pretty nice. Yeah. What's the proof on that? 105. Holds up. It holds yeah. up, sticks around. 
Continues has, to intensify. Has amazing mouthfeel. Amazing mouthfeel. Holds holds up kind of back of the throat type of a uh, thing for me. I'm still getting spice. Still kind of heating up still. So yeah. Which a lot of complexity nice. too. A lot of different layers going on as it sits there in your palate. You get Three different casts definitely add, <clears throat> definitely uh, puts the complexity of the whiskey in, in different layers for sure. I think it would go pretty good with a cigar. I don't disagree. Mm -hmm. Do you smoke cigars? A little bit. Kind he'd, of. he'd start if this. If no, I, I'm dabbling. Is what I would say. Oh, he's dabbling. He's dabbling. I, Jim smokes. Cigars. I need to put a bench out front. Derek, Darren, and I can sit out there and smoke cigars while we wait for customers. Yeah, that's true. That, that could be a new there. thing. Yeah. Could be a new thing. I want to go back when I go to uh, uh, Tennessee. Jack Daniels had a bench I really liked. I want to pick that up for for the the porch at the house. So. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the plan when I go back there. <laughs> Speaking for, of outdoor is it, seating. Is it for sale seating. or you're just going to take it? I'm just going to take it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> is that I, the store where you just go? Right, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. No, they've got, uh, they've a, got cool a whole... Store, yeah, yeah. they got a cool store that has a bunch of cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's all made by them. And it's it's reasonably priced. I, I guess it's because it's affiliated with the distillery. and uh, To that town square area. Yeah, okay. town square. And, uh, yeah. Uh, that's where I bought the sign that, yeah. I, that we have hanging up here. So, uh, yeah. So, that's cool. Uh, that's a side diversion from this, though, so 15 <laughs> stars. Uh, I like it. I've seen them a lot. They've really been getting a lot of play on social media yeah. and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, they keep putting out good stuff like this. That's going to continue to happen for them. So congrats to the team there. Uh, we like this one, and uh, keep them going, for sure. Yeah. Good job, Very good. All right. We'll wrap this one up, as we always do, by talking about where people can find us. Darren, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me at the bourbon adventures also several days a week at the abv bar barrel shop he's working on his hellos too, so <laughs> yeah. hello uh, uh, yeah, that fixed him, have him greet you when he comes yeah. in the door yeah and then uh you've got a class coming up too don't you yeah got it'll be after the fact when this oh, comes out so yeah. we're not plugging it but uh are you excited about this yes i am oh man yeah, so it'll be good it, maybe by the time this comes up we'll have a second class game. yeah yeah i'm starting to go uh, i'm like if this goes well i've got some ideas for some other ones for you to do too so we'll, we'll see hair braiding <laughs> yeah hair braiding that'll be nice. how to say hello how to say hello yes <laughs> jim how about you where can people find you, you can find me on facebook at jim fosnut on instagram at foz jim or most days hanging here at the ABV Barrel Shop in Arnold, Missouri. For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. That It's still tough for me that they want it to be called X. I, yeah. I can't do that. I, I'm still saying Twitter, and everybody knows what it is. I don't know that I'll ever change. No, it's a horrible name. Yeah, it is a horrible name. I don't like anything about it. It, like and it also looks so weird when you see like on the news and right. stuff. Oh, yeah. follow us on X. It's just like X. And no, it's one no. thing to say, oh, I got a tweet, but they right. say I got an X. I got an X. I, <laughs> I, I, I have four of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm one of those things I don't change. Uh, Jim Beam is always going to be Jim Beam to me. It's not going to be James B. Beam Distilling Co. I'm not going to call uh, it's, it's, the Willis Tower. It's Sears Tower. No matter what. It'll always be Sears Tower. Yellow Roses, Yellow Label. Yeah. I mean, Four Roses, Yellow Label. All yeah, yeah but Yellow Label. MGP. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's MGP is going to be MGP. So yeah, that things I, I'm just too old to change, Darren. Yeah, yeah, you're young. You may you may embrace these things. Uh, not any of those. <laughs> it's, I can embrace changes. Just not that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, maybe J James B. Beam. I could get behind. Really? Maybe. What about the Washington Redskins? Yeah. I heard they're pushing to the, get, get that name back. Yeah. Now. Right. That'll yeah, be the Native Americans are are pissed yeah. off there with the name back. Right. That that'll be that'll be an interesting one to see what happens with that. I. I uh, it's whatever happens, I, I'm fine with, as long as uh, the majority uh, is happy, I guess. I, well, they can leave it, they can get a new one. I, I mean, I don't like the new name. What are, what are they now? The, Commanders. That's a terrible name. I, I don't... Uh, that, I think it'd be fun to change it better. every five years. Just rotate through all the names that you could possibly think of. Yeah, that's an interesting... It, it would help them sell merchandise. Yeah. It yeah, would. Yeah, just, uh, yeah we, we keep it. It's like a... Uh, it's like a... Because it's Washington, it has... Maybe it's four years or two years. Like uh, <laughs> like, like Senate or House terms, yeah. And it's actually uh, elected. Yeah, six years. Uh, elected team like name. Yeah, yeah. Elected team name. Yes. That could... Maybe we're throwing out good ideas for them. We'll see. Uh, please get involved. Uh, head over to uh, uh, abvnetwork.com slash, uh, uh, excuse me, patreon.com slash the ABV Network, or at least give us a five-star review with comments. That helps new people find the show. It keeps things going here, so we'd appreciate that. We'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Cheers. Bye, y'all. Cheers.
Before we finish the show, let's talk about some of the great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro is owned and operated by Russell Creed, who makes stills for the hobby distiller. He offers a one-stop shop for everything the at-home distiller needs. Whether it's a small, experimental stovetop still or something bigger you run outside, he has the still or parts you would have difficulty fabricating yourself if you were trying to build a DIY still project. Additionally, he has resources to assist in creating unique distilled spirits including heirloom grains, barrels for aging, and recipes. Check out Russell's company online at moonshinestillpro.com. Finally, I have a question for you. Have you ever boxed a bear? Of course not. That'd be silly. Bears really don't follow the rules, so shots in the back of the head, punches to the nuts, and scrums after the bell would be the norm. A better idea would be to enjoy Boxing Bear Whiskey, a brand crafted by Nobleton's Distilling House in Union, Missouri, and sold exclusively at the ABV Barrel Shop in suburban St. Louis. This is a popular offering that sells out quickly, but when you're in town, stop by the ABV Barrel Shop and see if they have it in stock. Better yet, sign up for their email and text distribution over at abvbarrelshop.com and you'll know exactly when it is in stock. This is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, signing off. We thank you for listening to our programming and truly appreciate your support. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.